to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish family on this, the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. On this final weekend before the beginning of the season of Lent, Jesus takes us deeper into the commandments. As we come to worship, we are all invited to sing number 211, Holy, Holy, Holy. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today in the Gospel, Jesus is calling us to be perfect. So that's challenging. <laughs> and at the same time, Jesus is merciful and loving and compassionate with people who don't reach the, that ideal. He is forgiving sinners. So as we come together to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind all our shortcomings and our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you, to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or your sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If any one among you considers himself wise in his age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings for everything belongs to you, 
Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future. All belong to you and you to Christ and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on, on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. From my childhood, I remember that my mother taught me and my siblings to be polite and kind with other people. She didn't sit down with us to teach us about that, but she did that throughout life. She shared her wisdom with us, her children. Many times she expressed typical wisdom sayings. One of them was the golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. But probably even more import important was that she was a li living example for us, her children. Many of you are parents and grandparents. And I assume you do the same thing. 
You share your moral values with your children and grandchildren. You try to raise them in the same values as you were raised and that you consider as good. Here at school, we try to do the same thing. We raise the children in Christian values that we consider to be good. We support them to become responsible citizens and Christians. Like parents and teachers, Jesus is also a moral teacher. By word and example, he teaches his moral values to his disciples. Jesus' moral values are based on his Jewish religion. But at the same time, and that is what we hear in today's gospel, Jesus is stretching morality to higher standards. We heard in today's first reading from Leviticus, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But at the same time, Jesus quotes the Old Testament where he says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. There are conflicting moral visions in the Old Testament. But Jesus is unambiguous in his morality. For Jesus, love prevails always. We have to understand that at the time when the rule, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was developed, that was a step forward already. They came from a situation, so to say, from a morality of two eyes for an eye and two teeth for a, teeth, for a tooth. So an eye for an eye is a moral higher standard than they were used to at that time. But for Jesus, this is not enough. He wants to go further. Love prevails for Jesus always. That is what he taught his followers all the time. And that's what he showed them when he gave his own life at the cross. Jesus is challenging his audience by stretching the law to a higher standard. He says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. He wants us to ban hatred from our hearts and to let love prevail. Here in our Western society, we have always tried to stretch our moral values and grow in them. We follow the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We have rules and regulations about how we act in wartime. And we hold people accountable who violate these rules and we bring them to court. But at the same time, we have seen how vulnerable moral values can be when the Nazis took over in Germany in 1933. This was a Christian country with Christian moral values, but they disappeared rapidly when the Nazis took over. We have to protect our values, especially when new problems come to us and when we are challenged. How do we talk about migrants? And how do we talk about people from other religions? How do we deal with people from Northern Africa 
crossing the Mediterranean Sea in little boats looking for a better life in Europe? How do we deal with people from Middle and Southern America looking for a better life in the United States? I don't have the answers. But what I do know is that our response has to be in line with our Christian values, our Christian morals. Jesus is stretching the moral values to higher standards. There is a quote from Gandhi that says, the greatness of a nation can be judged by how it treats its weakest members. Our Christian faith challenges us to keep up the good morals and to stretch it for the better. We are called to love. Love prevails always. And Jesus is our example. Amen. And to, together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that her teaching and sacraments will be a rich source of mercy for those lost in sin, we pray. Lord, hear our for those who rule and govern, that they will embrace the gospel of life and the splendor of truth, we pray. Lord, for true peace on earth, especially among peoples and nations, that the Lord Jesus may unite those separated by hatred, oppression, and warfare, we pray. Lord, For the unemployed, that the Lord will provide them with work that is consonant with their human dignity, we pray. Lord, For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life, that the love of God will draw many souls to commit their lives to him, we pray. For all of our people, that God will truly bless us for our support of our parish and our bishop's appeal, and unite us in this endeavor, we pray. For the grace this week to forgive our enemies and to pray for reconciliation and peace in difficult or troubled relationships, we pray. For all the dearly departed, especially for Adam Rybarczyk, whose funeral was celebrated this week, and for Marion Vissers, that all will be enjoying the light of Jesus, we pray. Lord, our God, 
These are the prayers of your faith community. We ask you to support us and to walk with us, to hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. As the altar is prepared and the gifts are brought forward, please join in singing song number 653, You Alone, number 653. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the words of your wisdom, by, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Indeed, holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life, blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O oh Lord. You come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, O Lord, confirm us in unity, so that 
together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Marion Vissers, and all who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead, who, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Bernadette and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Number 113 in the Never Too Young book, number 113.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a couple of announcements. The Lenten season is a time for reflection and growth. Please take some time to check out the bulletin and our website for the programs that the Adult Faith Formation Team is offering during Lent. These programs can help you build your relationship with Jesus. Please call the parish office with any questions or to register. There are sign-up sheets in the gathering area to RSVP for our soup and sermon luncheon programs starting Wednesday, March 4th from noon to 1 p.m. Our parishioner, Sean Johnson, will offer a four-part series that will lead to a greater understanding of the Mass and how we are all called to actively participate in it. Join us for one or all of the dates. We hope to see you there. A Mardi Gras celebration will be held this Tuesday, February 25th at 5.30 p.m. in the social hall. Enjoy food, door prizes, crafts, face painting, and jazz music. There is no cost to attend, but please call the parish office to RSVP. The little black books for Lent are available on the table next to the sacristy. And masses, masses for Ash Wednesday will be held at 7 a.m., 8.45 a.m. with the school children, and 6.30 p.m. I think today's gospel was pretty challenging uh, to be perfect as God is perfect. That's the goal. And that's a high goal. So Jesus is stretching uh, moral values and the Old Testament values, he is stretching them to even uh, a higher moral. So, and we are called to follow him. And so at the end of Mass, let's ask for God's grace uh, and to practice uh, what Jesus told us in the gospel in our daily lives. And I wish you all a very nice Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. We are sent, living in the love of Christ, letting love prevail in all of our actions, singing song number 515, 10,000 reasons, song number 515. My fault, number 561.